Hi, um, continuing from the previous video, um, I'm now going to talk about risk. Um, risk is spoken about, um, about a lot in healthcare. Um, it can be used to mean different things. As I've already said, it's commonly used interchangeably with the term cumulative incidents. Um, however, there are different types of risk. Um, and I'm going to go over these different types of risks. Um, to just try and clear up and to clarify um, what they mean. So in order to do this, I'm going to like create an imaginary study um, experiment in which we have a control group and an intervention group. Um, and I'm just going to use this to show you how risk the concept of risk is useful to us um, in medicine. So as you know, in a, in a normal study, a control group would um, receive a ple um, placebo treatment or a standard treatment, and the intervention group would receive our new, say, drug. So we're just pretending we've got a new drug. Um, and we're going to recruit a population for our study. So I'll just put total population there. So I don't know, let's say in the control group we recruit, I don't know, 1,324 people. In the intervention group we recruit 1,325, let's say. Um, this type of style um, experiment would be a clinical trial or an interventional trial. Um, in a later video I will go over all the different types of study um, and what, what the main differences are between them. So what we do is we'll measure, uh, I don't know, um, we'll put deaths. So typically you'd measure deaths um, after 10 years, say. So we've got a particular disease here, it's a big killer. A lot of people die, say, within 10 years or a significant number, and we're going to compare if giving this interventional drug is going to lower the number of deaths, say. Um, in experiments, you won't always look at deaths as your outcome, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do deaths here. So let's say in the control group, uh, 404 people die out of our, out of our um, sample of 1,324. So within 10 years, 404 people from the control group have died. And in the intervention group, let's say 350 die within 10 years. So we have all our statistics now. And what we can do is something called the death risk. So this is the first type of risk I'm going to talk about, death risk. Death's our outcome, but if death wasn't our outcome, if it was something else, you just insert that there. So in order to work out the death risk for each group, all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the number of deaths by the total population. I'm going to do that for each groups, for each group, sorry. So for the control group, our death risk will be 404 divided by 1324 and for our intervention group, It's going to be 350 divided by 1325. All right, so I'm not great at math, so I'm going to do this on calculator. So 404 divided by 1324 equals 0.3. Um, I'll round it to 1. Um, usually they wouldn't round to two decimal places, but for simplicity, um, I'm going to do that here. And for this sum, we've got 0.26. So here's our death risk. This is our death risk for the control group. This is our death risk for the intervention group. Of course, these can be converted into percentages. That would be 31%, 1 being 100%, and this would be 26%. So the death risk in the control group is 31%. The death risk in the intervention group is 26%. Now what we can do is we can work out something called the risk difference. Risk difference is the difference in risk. Piece of cake. So the difference we can see here is 
0.05. If you add 5 to 0.26, you get 0.31. So our risk difference is 0.5, which again can be converted into a percentage, which would be 5%. So the risk difference between an intervention and the control group is 5%. Death risks, risk difference between the difference between the two death risks. So there, that's that. Now we can do something called the relative risk of death. Now relative risk is really important. Relative risk is very important and very useful because it's a relation between the two risks as opposed to having two numbers, a risk for this and a risk for that, a risk for intervention, a risk for control. We can have just one number, a relative risk. And relative risk is actually a type of ratio. There are different types of relative risks and I'll go over these in the next video but for now I'm just going to continue. So it's a ratio and the ratio is usually um, sorry it's usually exposed over unexposed or in this case it would be intervention over control So if you're looking at an exposure for a disease and how that affects outcome, you would use this, but we're using this because we're looking at intervention and control. So intervention over control would be this number, 0.26 over control, 0.31, which equals... 0.26 over 0.31 equals 0.86 recurring, I'm going to round it to 87. This of course can be converted into a percentage, it would be 87%. So our relative risk, and because we're measuring death, it would be relative risk of death, is 0.87, 87% is our relative risk of death. Now we can work out something called the relative risk reduction. I'm sorry I'm moving so quick, I've just got 10 minutes for this video. Um, but you can play it over as many times as you want. So relative risk reduction, all we do, we use this number here, which is our relative risk of death, and we minus it from 1. 1 would represent our entire population, 100% of people, minus the relative risk of death, minus 8, 7 would equal 3, would bring us up to 90, so it's going to be 0 0.13, which we could convert to 13%. So there we have it. The relative risk reduction is 13%, meaning that if we introduce the intervention, we'll reduce the risk of death by 13%, Another way of looking at it is if we had a population of 100 and we were introducing the intervention, we would expect 13 less deaths out of each 100 out of the 100 than we would expect for the control. So we're saving an extra 13 lives. They're the different types of risks. I'm going to bring in a new video going into more detail about relative risk and following this one. Thanks.